Welcome back. It's still Plus Politics. And we are still discussing on those state governorship election. Much like it's a dual counterpart, the road to the election has been an unexpected one, beginning with the fallout between the governor and his deputy to the attack of the campaign of one of the candidates and more. To continue the conversation on the state governorship election is Dotun Ojon, the governorship candidate of Young Progressive Party, YPP. Good evening, Mr. Ojong. Good evening. It's good to be here. Oh, sorry. I think it should be called Ojong, right? Let me pronounce it accurately. <laughs> You're right. Okay, let's get the conversation started. Uh, YPP. I remember one of the, um, the, the entrance of that name during the presidential election was the fact that it is for young people. But in the presidential election, you didn't present a young candidate, so to say. So this time around, is it safe to say that you are a young candidate? And how old are you, if I'm permitted to do that? Um, yeah, a quick one. The, the Young Progressive Party, the young there is a combination of two things. First, is young in terms of perhaps you are you are young as in age. The second aspect of it is um, having the capacity to bring new ideas into governance. So the young there is a combination of people and idea. And as for my age, INEC has declared me as the youngest candidate uh, in Ondo uh, State um, Guba election coming up on Saturday. Uh, at 38, though, I consider that an insult that uh, a 38 year old man is uh, the youngest among all the candidates mm -hmm. because I, I was actually looking uh, forward to seeing younger people in terms of age. But um, age is a matter of, um, age usually is just a matter of what the calendar says. What's more important is um, your capacity, character, and courage. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Thank you for that perspective. So let's talk about the election. Um, I don't know whether you, are, you can face this reality or you still live in an Eldorado world that uh, you are not considered as one of the gladiators. Are you okay with that reality or what is the point you want to make in this election? I hope the network hasn't frozen again. Okay, I, I, I hope that uh, we would find a way of getting you back to have this conversation. Okay, you can hear me. Yes, I can. Did you hear my last question? So I was, okay, go ahead. I was actually talking about um, uh, the difference between realities. Now, first to a professional politician, there's a reality. There's also the reality of the people. And I don't want us to lose the people in our entire discussion. Because now uh, a, a professional politician paints the picture that uh, his own party is the most popular. And they sell this idea through the media. And that's why you see that oftentimes that the media um, come out to say that there are uh, parties that are popular. But again, the problem is what is the position of the people? And which concerns me a lot. In you know, those states today, we have only um, less than 50% of the people come out uh, every time to cast their vote. Less than, in some cases, we've had a case of 30%. Because in the last governorship election, it was less than 500,000 people that actually voted. What happened to the remaining people? So what uh, professional politicians really like is to have this uh, perception that, uh, oh, their parties are very popular as against what really the people want. So if you, if you like it or not, uh, my party today, when you look at it nationally, is uh, and you look at it from the National Assembly, for example, there are only three political parties in the National Assembly. We have YPP and the remaining two other political parties. So if you look at it from that angle, my party is very popular. You know, in those states here, if you, you, will, you will agree with me, we are perhaps the only party that has connected with the people based on their communities. We are not just gathering people in the name of uh, wanting to campaign. We have been able to connect with the people. We have told them our manifesto. And we are about the only party 
that has a concrete manifesto that the people can actually relate with, which we call the lead agenda. So we are out to win, and what concerns us is not what professional politicians are saying, it is what the people are saying. And at this point in time, I think uh, the people of Kondo State want somebody who understands their plight and their passion. Okay, uh, Doctor, uh, please, you might need a bit of, uh, you might need to do a bit of education for me. When you say professional politician, the current governor is a well-respected lawyer before he became governor. Um, the PDP candidate is also a well-respected lawyer and is still practicing law uh, and is vying to be the governor. The, the, Mr. Dakbo Adelegon that I just spoke to is also a sitting businessman. So what do you really mean by professional politician? Okay, maybe I should tell you one or two attributes of a professional politician so that from there you can actually pick uh, people into the class and begin to subtract some of us from us. Now, a professional politician wants to win at all costs. It doesn't matter whether the community has rejected him or her. The second thing is that a professional politician always comes to the people every four, four years. You will not see them within the period of the four years, but once it's time for election. And I can begin to cite example. The, the closest local government to Accra South, where this capital is, is Accra North local government. For four years, for close to four years, the sitting governor is in Accra here. We can actually count the number of times that he has visited uh, uh, Igui which is in Accra North local government here. So now he's going back there. That perhaps has classified him as a professional politician. The man that you mentioned, um, Mr. Ita Jagede, came out about uh, close to four years ago to contest election. And immediately after the election, he disappeared. He only reappeared some times ago. So you can also at, at, at least put him where he belongs. So we have a number of them. But again, we must know that uh, leading the people in the political system is beyond uh, just four years to campaign or to win the people's vote. First, what is paramount to us in the white people is to win the heart of the people. And this is what we have done. Win the heart of them before you win their vote so that you do not have to coerce them on the day of election to vote for you or begin to chase them all over the community uh, to, uh, not to vote for that candidate. As we speak now, this is the first time in those states where some people will be avoiding an entire local government. Our local government today, you cannot get there and, and campaign without being attacked. In fact, I, I was there before the local government election and they came to congratulate me that perhaps our vehicle, uh, our party is the only political party that has actually driven a branded vehicle into our town and, and, and came out without any attack. We noticed that they were actually people trailing us. That is not the kind of politics we are talking about. That's only the kind of politics that professional politicians play. What we are talking about is best win the heart of the people, which is what we have done. Okay, I think I like this perspective and I must confess that that's very brilliant because I was just wondering that when you say professional politician, I was expecting that uh, probably these people have no other job than to just focus on that job. But it's so sad that uh, that's the definition of our kind of politician, that they only think about the next election and not about the next generation. And you also mentioned the issue of... Um, that's not your word, this issue of we must win election, this do or die uh, uh, idea. So can we be sincere? Uh, are you in for this election to just make an impression of how politics should be played and not necessarily to win? Um, if you know where we are coming from, you will know the answer to that question, really. Because this is for us, like our own life, we have invested our life into it. And when we talk about investing our life, it's not in terms of uh, Naira and Kobo alone. It's also in form of leaving everything, closing every door of possibility, because we want to open one door of impossibility. We just have to say, look, it has come to a point where we must give alternative kind of leadership. We cannot continue to do something the same old way and expect a different result. We can continue to tow a familiar path and want a fantastic destination. It's not just going to happen. So what we, we have 
done, and we are very glad about it, is to have come all out. Go and check. You can actually check from the website. Check from the debates that we have attended. Check from the way we have related with the people. You will know that we are only out to win the election. And I must tell you, in fairness, in this election that we are facing, we are just about... Uh, I, I don't just want to be general figure. We are just about five uh, people that really made business in this election with due respect to some other political parties. Because you see their mindset, you see the way they are relating um, with, with, with the people in power. You see, you see, we have attended meetings together and you see their mindset, you are like, no, this is not the kind of um, a difference that we, want to, uh, that, that we want to bring on board. So we are coming all out to win this election. What we have lost uh, is it, it, too much to be counted if we do not come out and create the difference that we want. And of course, our winning is not by all means. We do not have any alternative than to win. But we must quickly correct that, that it is not by all means. But at the end of the day, we must have seen that the people have really spoken either positively or negatively at the, at the end of the election. So we are, we are coming out to win election. And this is not a child's play. If you know where we started from on June 12th, when we declared to this present moment what we have invested in, the time, the resources, the kind of opportunities that we have um, actually lost because of this, then you will agree with me that we, we actually made this. Mess. Okay, uh, Dotu, let's let's uh, let's also look at um, the problem we have from this side because for us we can hardly differentiate Party A from Party B because there's hardly any ideological differences. Uh, why you may want to tell me that YPP is different? I'll remind you that you just made allusion. To the fact that you have a senator in, 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 in at the upper chamber, and this senator, I'm, I'm sure you are referring to Infa Yuba. This was a man who has also been around these parties before coming to your party, which suggests to me that political parties are just platforms. So, what is different about YPP, or is it about Dotu making a difference now? No, I think um, it's a combination of both. Um, no matter how, no matter how anybody wants to see it, let's begin from the, the. If you get to the National Assembly today, there's a particular name I forgot the name that they refer, um, that they use or, um, to call a senator. It shows that despite the fact that he's been, um, he's been here and there, coming to YPP is first. Oh. I wish, I hope this is sorted I, out because uh, I'm, I'm enjoying your flow. Okay, continue. Okay, th thank you so much. So I, I was saying that it's a combination of both uh, the ideology of the party and the personality of the candidate. Of course, um, before I come to the senator, you will remember in 2019 that uh, our candidate in fairness um, was the best candidate presented for that election. Do a lot of people may want to argue about that. Now, coming to the Senate, you also discover that our man there, now Senator Efrain Yuba, uh, is called the golden boy of the Senate. It shows that if you look at the record, he, he has performed wonderfully well. And that's a product of the fact that when he joined the YPP, there was some kind of change in orientation. I have been into places, I have never joined any political party, but my orientation is not just a product of the party that you belong to. It comes even from your family. But when I came into YPP, I had to understand, okay, what does the party stand for? Does it align with my personal idiosyncrasy? And the answer is yes, that's on the basis of the party. Now, on the basis of the personality, as we speak now, I am about the only person who understands not only the problem um, of leadership that we are facing in Nondo State, but have a practical solution. Our party is the only party that came up with a readable idea called the LEAP Agenda. We presented the LEAP Agenda to the people, and we also had what we call the KPI. The KPI are the key performance indicators that the people will use to measure. So in the next three months, the people know how to actually mark their leader. This is not happening. You remember, in even the ruling party, they came with a whole lot of promises in 2015 at the national level. But it got to the point that they deny half of, of their promises that, no, we never said this, because they don't have a KPI through which the people can actually measure their success or their failure. But we are coming out as a candidate, as a party, to okay. tell the people that, oh, these are the KPI. 
From now to now, this is what you, you should expect. For example, in our LEAP agenda, the first thing that we are concentrating on is the idea of leadership. The current leadership idea we have in Ondo State is one man wants to be the governor, the wife wants to be the deputy, the family member wants to be commissioner and all that. No, we have to change this narrative from people to power. That is placing the people of Ondo State at the center of leadership people. So that means that all our programs, our policies, and our ideas will be about the people. And the concept of leadership that we are bringing on board is about three things. The first thing is priority. We know that government will never have enough money to cater for the problems of the people. So what are we going to do differently? We want to prioritize the people, their needs. What, what, what is so paramount to them? That's the issue of priority. Of course, I've talked about people. The third one is their prosperity. It shows that all our programs, all our ideas will be targeted at the prosperity of the people. In the year 2014, the United Nations came out to say that Poverty has become a big issue in Africa. But for us to tackle it, we must uh, allocate more resources to people living in abject poverty. And that's our own idea of governance. We only want to identify areas that will bring more prosperity to the people and work on them in the next four years. I don't know whether we have any political party that has such um, a Westerist um, idea and ideology and also has a KPI to measure the success like we do have. Okay, Doctor, I, I must say that uh, your points are well articulated. I wish we would have more time. But let me ask you this question, which I think uh, probably you've not thought about. If you emerge as the governor of Ondo State, do you have candidates even vying for State House of Assembly? Are you going to run a one-man affair surrounded by opposition? Have you thought about that? Yes, I have. You see, the, the, the problem we have in Nigeria is not uh, with opposition as to you do not have members in the House of Assembly. Once we continue to drag this narrative there, you continue to build back politicians who will continue to jump from one political party to the other. The major challenge we have is that we do not have leaders who are doing the biddings of the people. If you get to Ondo State today, the House of Assembly complex is a place that you cannot put your dogs. But that's where our legislators uh, um, do their plenary and they assemble every time. I doubt whether they will have a problem with a governor who is going to put them in a befitting edifice that, that, that will allow their, their brains to actually work properly. So I am not afraid to have uh, people of opposing political parties. Perhaps even after we win election, maybe we will be the only state in Nigeria where we will organize a local, a local government election and all the political parties will be given the freedom to win uh, whatever position okay. they have the capacity to win. See, beyond political party, I am appealing to people. Uh, my, my colleague was telling me this morning about the man he spoke with at the mechanic workshop some days back. The man actually swore that he can never support us that he is, is a leader of another political party in the state. But this morning, he was about the first person to call us, saying that ah, he actually ha had a rethink about what we discussed and is willing to actually work with us, despite the fact that he doesn't belong to our own political party. These are the kind of people we are meeting okay. every day. And Thank we are confident that this difference that Thank we have you, been for has come to the state. Thank you so much, Dotun Ojan. We, I understand, is also a journalist by profession, right? So we wish you all the best, yes. and we hope that uh, people will see through what you're saying, and they will decide come Saturday. Let's keep the conversation rolling. You can go back to the campaign ground. Remember to keep safe. Remember all the COVID protocols while you're Thanks. campaigning to the people. Thank you so much for your yeah. time. And to our viewers, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take on this. Please don't go anywhere. All eyes are now on Ondo State, as the Edo State election has taken place peacefully and results announced without much hassle. I wonder, will the Sunshine State perform much better than its Edo State counterpart? Or will it cause disappointment to those who hail from the state? I ask this question because violent events have taken place in the state, speaking specifically 
about the attack on the campaign team of one of the candidates. Just like I said to the candidates in Edo State, I say to the candidates in Ondo State, please have the interest of the electorate or the art as we plan for Saturday. So to our leaders today, especially to those in Ondo State, as we plan for Saturday, make a decision to take steps that will only profit the people in the state and even in diaspora. Thank you for your time. This is how far we can go on Plus Politics today. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, on the same station. I remain yours truly, Kayode Ladeinde, saying bye for now.